Hi guys, I'm Marcel, back with The Pulse. Today is kind of the culmination of the past 18 months of work on this channel. I'm actually talking to an expert from the traditional medical world, from academia at the highest levels. Dr. Jingzheng Zhi, who now runs Genfinity, Dr. Zhi is an expert in genetics, biotechnology, and immunology. He's personally mentored over 15 doctoral students and created doctors. He has received over $100 million in grants, and at his lab, Genfinity, he developed the most accurate test for intracellular NAD levels. And over the past three years, he's collected thousands of tests and a treasure trove of information about NAD boosting, which methods work the best, what the results are, and what he's finding He's even in disbelief himself. Basically, you can cure disease, you can prevent disease by boosting NAD level. The three main biomarkers that he focuses on are senescence, inflammation, and oxidative stress. And when you have these conditions, you have an increased presence or potential for disease. So by boosting NAD levels, you can address these things. And by taking something like fisetin or quercetin that he takes, he also is a big fan of fisetin that I take, you can reduce inflammation, you can reduce senescent cells, and you can prevent further disease. One of the questions I asked him, because he was talking about a cervical cancer patient who was taking a senolytic and reducing their senescent cells, can you then get a better result from radiation? So he talks about this and then transitions to talk about NMN and treating thyroid cancer. Listen to this clip. Is there a possibility or are you seeing that you can treat senescence and then possibly get, for example, better results from radiation therapy because you don't get as much spread? That, that, that's what, that's what we, uh, our data are suggesting. And you, to, to prove that uh, your hypothesis is absolutely on the mark. And, and that's, what we, that's what I was uh, setting out to do before I quit my academic job. And I'm still talking to my, my former colleagues to uh, uh, perhaps start a clinical trial to combine radiation therapy and the senescent uh, synonytics to see whether we can improve uh, survival mm -hmm. and let's say in cervical cancer, but it's in many different diseases. Sure. Well, that, I keep telling people, you know, listen, in our community, the, the supplement community, there are a lot of people who feel that they haven't gotten from traditional medicine a, a good enough or an effective enough treatment. And then they come and then they start taking supplements. They feel better. They stop. I have a very close relative. We can talk more <laughs> offline um, who has only been taking NMN for two and a half months, switching to NMN just temporarily, but uh, as a, as a function of taking supplements to treat things and their, they, their doctor after two and a half months of NMN, their doctor re, uh, cut thyroid medication in half. This person's mm -hmm. thyroid cancer recoverer and yeah. reduced uh, blood pressure medicine as well because their blood pressure came down since then. Yes. And this is an 84-year-old. Oh, oh, yeah. We, we have cases after cases. I have one lady and she has a thyroid nodule. And mm -hmm. after, after taking uh, our uh, NMM formulation, after a month, the thyroid nodule is gone. And, <laughs> and you know, we cannot directly attribute that to to the NMM by doing that months, the only change she made was adding the supplement. And her arthritis was also gone. It's also gone. And I have a cardiologist in, uh, in, in Boston. He's, he's an integrative uh, cardiologist. He, he does NAD tests um, with us and he uses our NMM formulation to treat all kinds of patients and getting great outcome. He's actually giving a webinar on February the 15th, she, and he's going to show all kinds of case studies on how uh, the NMM formulation can treat uh, various diseases. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. It's beautiful, yeah. And I... myself, I cured my knee problem, my back problem, my shoulder, my wrist, um, associated with my tennis. It, <laughs> yeah, it helps it, tennis, doesn't it? But, you can really uh, get people to recover much faster. So he's getting unbelievable results. 
using supplements in conjunction with traditional medicine. So my next question was, how do we talk to doctors? How do we as patients, potential patients, talk to doctors about NMN? Say we're taking NMN or we're interested in taking NMN. How do we approach? How do we begin that conversation? And he talks about who you should be talking to about this because it's really not in the scope of traditional medicine yet. My allergies are now completely gone. And not only that, but no more sinus infections. I don't even get cold during the winter, like that bone chilling cold. I'm 58. I'm not a, a spring chicken, right? And I've, you know, I've had allergies my entire life. How could they be gone? So to hear you telling me this, but I keep telling people, talk to your doctor, talk to your doctor, talk to your doctors, because I believe that they need to be in the loop on what's going on with NMN because of what you're saying, especially when we talk about treating something like cervical cancer by multiple methods, only a uh, an oncologist is really going to understand how to do this, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our doctors are trained in a very strict manner, and they have to uh, do prescribe uh, uh, treatment within the guidelines. Otherwise, they may lose their practice license. And I, you know, I understand their their point of view and and the uh, the approaches. But on the other hand, uh, new sciences are not. Uh, put into practice in medicine uh, quickly enough. It, it takes a long, long time. For for your viewers uh, who are having those issues, I my recommendation is talk to functional medicine, integrative medicine doctors. And uh, your your regular doctors are you know you especially the uh, uh, the spe spe specialists. And they are not going to uh, do things outside of the box. Right. And if they can treat the problem, and also they are trained to treat diseases. What we are talking about is not how, really how to treat the diseases, but more how we improve the overall health and make our body fight the various conditions uh, on their own by increasing the wellness of our cells. So functional medical doctors are the way to go for now, but he's made it, as I said, his life mission to educate doctors on this. So how do you do that? My question for him was, do you need more trials? Do you need more data? Listen to what he says. He's got the data. We actually have a lot of data. We, we have multiple clinical trials that we have conducted. And it, it's not the lack of uh, data. I think it's, there are two things. It's a lack of education. And most uh, doctors have already forgotten about NAD, in, including myself. I, I forgot about NAD until about two, maybe three years ago, OK? I Which saw it in the textbooks at Oxford. Someone sent me the, the section yeah. <laughs> where they're teaching so, about NAD at medical school. We, we learned the NAD. Now they are learning NAD probably in high school, the crap cycle. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I learned about NAD in, in, in college. Mm -hmm. And then over the years, hey, you know, I'm not a biochemist. I was not thinking about the NAD. And I, I mean, I know of NAD. Um, but didn't realize how important it is um, until about three years ago. And all my doctor friends, they are in the same boat. And they forgot about it. They don't know. If they don't study, they don't know how important it is. I think education is a key. We have to educate. And I made a decision uh, a, a month ago or so that I'm going to devote most of my time in education. We need to educate not only the public, but we need to educate the doctors as well. 
okay, Dr. G, you've got the data, you're going to educate the doctors, and we can cure and prevent disease taking NMN or an NAD booster. Now, which NAD booster is best? I had to put him on the spot and ask him this question because it comes up so often. So, for example, NR or NMN. Have you noticed a difference between the NAD level or NAD optimization impacts from those taking NMN versus NR? Is it similar? Is one better than the other? If you did have to choose, and I know your supplement is another story, but if someone has to say, I'm looking at NMN, I'm looking at NR. And again, this isn't about me trying to pick one or the other. I tell people all the time, do what gets your NAD up, do what works for you. But this I, question keeps coming up. Uh, is there a better? I I, I totally I totally agree with you. And the most important thing is, you know, take take your favorite supplement, get to testing to see where where you are, and most importantly, how you feel. Do you feel a benefit? And num numbers are numbers. Okay, because every every person may need uh, to be at a different level but what's most important i want to come back to another point is how you how you feel do you get the benefit that's what's mo more important the testing will help you to uh, understand why you are getting the benefits or why you are not getting the benefit and right. at the end of the day is how your physical your physiological your mental health and i just want to you know emphasize that Okay, no, no, it's... Then I will ask you your, your, your question. So from a theoretical point of view, uh, NMN is what we call a one-step precursor, meaning that you only need one enzyme to make NAD from NMN. And NR is a two-step precursor uh, to make NAD. NR is converted to NM into NMN, and NMN then converted into NAD. Now, imagine that someone who is deficient in the enzyme that converts NR into NMN, and that enzyme is called NR kinase or NRK. If mm -hmm. NRK is deficient in someone, taking NR is not going to work for that person. Then there are other issues like uh, you 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 need to transport NR or NMN inside of the cells, and there are transporters that, that will help that to happen. If the transporters are deficient in someone, then that form of supplement may not work very well. And so. I'm not giving you a clear answer as to whether NMN is better than NR and because it is probably going to be person dependent to a certain degree. If you really want me, if I have to give you a choice, my choice would be NMN um, because it's a one step pre precursor and number two, and NMN and, uh, uh, and and NR as well, they also have biological functions. These supplements not only provide health benefit because they are precursors to NAD, but these compounds themselves also have various biological functions. Mm. My personal experience is we seem to get better uh, health outcomes with NMN then NR, I, I, I don't have a side-by-side a, a -side comparison. Um, general terms, you see. General to. terms, I think NMN uh, gives better uh, outcome. So ultimately, either one will work, but when pressed, he did go with NMN since it's a one-step precursor to NAD. Now, since we're on a roll here, and since so much of what I've been talking about on the channel is playing out in his world of academia and medicine, I wanted to know, is it 
best to take NMN under the tongue. This is another hypothesis of mine, uh, developed along with some viewers who chimed in on this topic. He starts off a little cool to the idea. It turns out he doesn't like taking it under his tongue. But then when you listen to his explanation, he really warms up to the overall approach of letting it dissolve in the mouth. So he gives another way to do that if you don't want to take it under the tongue. I'm taking pure NMN, it's a very fine powder, and I put it under my tongue. I take it sublingually. Mm -hmm. um, I can only speak to the fact that these sinus infections, in infections went away, these allergies went away. Um, I, I barely get sick. I got sick for a week. And other viewers have, have conjectured that possibly it's because it's getting into the bloodstream before the digestive tract. Is there any validity to that? Um, I think there is there is there is some validity. I'm not sure how strong. Mm -hmm. And what I can tell you is, if you take a uh, in in water, it goes through your digestive system. It works for uh, for most people. And with the integrative cardiologies, what we have found out is, and what we are recommending now is that you may want to uh, keep the NMN solution in your mouth. You take a sip, keep it in the mouth for you know mm -hmm. 30 to 45 Same seconds. Fact, then. It's getting into, so yeah, yeah. so you, you 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 get some sublingual and mucosal absorption in general in, in your mouth. And that that's as good as putting the powder under the, the tongue. I hate putting powders underneath. I love tongue. it. I got so used to it. I love it now. But I totally understand. I mean, some people have gag reflex. And... I I I hate it. I mean, I, I'm never going to do it unless that uh, another approach uh, doesn't work. Okay. Well, so it's not only picking the right substance that works for you, but picking the right delivery method. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's very important because you know. I mean, we you, you get the same you get the same effect as uh, uh, having the powder and uh, under the tongue. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. I think most people would uh, agree with me that uh, keeping a solution it's actually a nice lemonade taste. You know, yeah, you know, yeah, doesn't bother me. Yeah. So, so it's, it's a very very good taste. Uh, if you don't like to put the powder under your tongue, just you know, take, do what I I am telling you to do. Just you know, keep keep a solution in your mouth for for some and even squish in your mouth and to mouthwash. Your yeah. So I think that what's working is when the absorption happens in in this area in general, you are getting more uh, of the product into your your brain. Mm. And I think that can. Per perhaps give you a, a better uh, outcome in terms of mental health and uh, and the uh, neuronal issues and and obviously it, it could be good for for, for sinuses because you know, it's much closer and that's what you're having problems and by the way my I had a, I, I had asthma for for almost 20 years and I I had to take uh, asthma medicine for a long, long time, especially in, in winter times. After NMN, totally gone. So I'm extremely grateful for the work that Dr. Xi is doing, for coming on this show. He's also been on Modern Healthspan recently. He's really turning up his presence online and talking to many doctors, as you heard. We're going to continue to talk to Dr. Xi in the future. I've got another two videos coming up soon from him. One focuses on NAD injections or infusions, his thoughts both good and bad about that approach for various illnesses. We also talk specifically quite a bit about long COVID. So I'm going to make those separate episodes and post them soon. Be on the lookout for more information. Truly exciting, truly amazing to see this, what's been playing out with you and I over the past several months, playing out now in the world of traditional medicine. Just fantastic. See you guys again soon.